Good morning, everybody, class. Uh, I'm going to talk, my speech will be about the biography of Ludwig van Beethoven, the great uh, composer from the Romantic period. Okay, Ludwig van Beethoven is a very important figure in the transition from the classical period to the romantic. So class, cl classical and romantic period was given in music and in all other forms of arts. The classical period started in the year 1750. Then the romantic period emerged one century later in 1850. So Beethoven was born in 1770, so only 20 years after the classical period started. So he is said to be a very important figure in this transition. Some uh, erudites, some scholars say that he was the creator of Romanticism in music. So Romanticism does not necessarily mean the an intimate thing between a man and a woman. Romantic, romanticism in music means when you express all your feelings and you put it in the music. You express love, you put it, you express hate, you put it in, into music. So Beethoven was a great romantic composer. He was born, like as I said before, in 1770, December the 6th. So I'm going to talk about three topics which are his early, early life, his career, and his musical compositions. There are many, many, many more topics, but I'm going to cover all, only these three in my body uh, paragraphs of uh, discussion. Okay, Beethoven's early life. Here we have a picture when he was 13 years old. He was a pre-teenager. There are some topics in here that if you want, you, might, you can do a research. I'm not going to cover these topics, but let's say that if you read, he didn't have a fun childhood. Now you can imagine. He began to attract my attention at the age of six or seven. So his father was an alcoholic, and he suffered from hearing problems in his early 40s. So those are some topics that are in this picture, but I'm going to cover just the three topics of early life, career, and musical compositions. Was his early life, okay? So Beethoven was born in this, in the city of Bonn in Germany, okay? His mother, which was, was called Maria Magdalena, she was a very moralistic woman. And his father, uh, Johann von Beethoven, he was a court singer but he was not a very good singer. He was like a mediocre. He was better known for his alcoholism addiction <laughs> than in his music. So he was addicted to alcohol. So uh, Beethoven's early life, it was a very tough life because his father was very tough with him. He used to lock him in a cellar and force him to practice music for many hours. He used to flog him, beat him. So his father was like a very tough uh, parent. So he didn't have a fun childhood. So you can imagine all the, the ordeals that he went through that marked him for the rest of his life. So his life was very sad and depressed. Because of that, he didn't have a good uh, Far, a, a good father. He, his father, he was only a singer. He, he was not a very uh, gifted musician. But he wanted Beethoven to be like Mozart. So he forced him to practice and practice and practice to the point that Beethoven ended up in, in a trauma because of that. Okay? So um, in his early Every life he gave his first concert in 1778, so at the age of eight. He
he was still still young still young and he did it very well so I'm gonna uh, now I will talk about his career okay so Beethoven moved to Vienna later on so he did not stay in Germany he moved to Vienna Vienna is the capital of all musicians since the since the early years when the music began to emerge from the period of the Renaissance, Baroque, classical, romantic, and all the periods, Vienna has been the capital for all musicians. All musicians, the most talented, gifted, they ended up in Vienna. So Beethoven, Beethoven moved to Vienna to continue with his career. In Vienna, he studied musical composition, okay, under Haydn. Haydn is a great, very great musician from the classical period. So he was Beethoven's professor in musical composition. Then he also studied vocal composition under Salieri, Antonio Salieri, which is an Italian composer. Mm -hmm. They were all uh, at the highest point in music in Vienna, and they used to play for the emperors. So, um, next. Here we see Beethoven conducting an orchestra. So, and you see his face. He was a very, had a very strong temper. He was very passionate with music. And he all, always passed this to his students. You have to be passionate with music. That's why romanticism reflects your passions. Very strong. And so he's there with a button conducting an orchestra. So Beethoven composed 32 sonatas, nine symphonies, and many other uh, pieces of music. I mean, prelots in music and other music styles. But I'm going to focus most in the sonatas and the symphonies. So um, the, there was a time in his life, at the 40s, when he began to experience one of the Hard, hardest, tough times in his life. A very tough time, a very time of, uh, and it was when he began to experience hearing loss. He ended up deaf. So that was a very tough time in his life. Okay, so it is said to be that the ninth, the ninth symphony he composed completely deaf. Can you imagine that? That a musician is deprived from his hearing. What kind of help would that be? Because musicians need the hearing. His, um, his, his life, his biography, I mean, as a, a very important figure in, uh, in Romanticism. So next is... Uh, is, is yeah, the next is number three. So here we will need some audio. This is Moonlight Sonata, one of his compositions. So among many other compositions, I only chose three because there are so many. Can you notice the sadness in that song? Yeah, bring it higher. So do you notice how sad the music is? That's called Moonlight Sonata. So you can feel the sadness. I mean, the intense sadness that is in that song. Okay, good. Okay, I'm, I'm not, I only show you a piece because it's, it's a very long uh, piece of, of music. But Beethoven was a sad person, a depressed person. Not like Mozart. Mozart. Mozart was happier. When you compare Beethoven's music with Mozart, you can notice the difference. Mozart's music is lively. It's a lively music that gives you the desire to live. But Beethoven's music is so sad. I mean, not all his music, but most. It's so sad that it will express, it will make you feel like this is a man who really suffered. Moonlight Sonata, this, but she rejected him. 
because of his hearing loss. So Beethoven felt so sad, so uh, hit by that rejection, because that the cause why she rejected him was his deafness. So she, some scholars say that she kind of made fun of him in some ways. So that really hurt Beethoven's feelings. And he composed this song, Moonlight Sonata, based on that. So it seems that he went to the moonlight and then tried to um, find some relief in nature. So he called it the Moonlight Sonata. You see, you can feel the waves of, this, of the moonlight. And he is frustration and sadness because he was rejected by one of his female students because she noticed that he had a hearing problem. So let's listen now to the second one. This one is, is peculiar. It's the, the fifth symphony. The fifth symphony, the feeling is that this, the fate, death is knocking at your door. Ta -da -da -da. Ta -da -da -da. The fate, the death is knocking at your door. You notice how it comes from lower. And more intense, and more intense. Tears. So. Oh, then it comes again. Ta -ta -ta -ta. It means I'm knocking at your door. I came to take you. And then it comes from low intensity to higher. You see, it, it becomes increasing, increasing, increasing. And then more intense. A little bit more intense, and one final bit. Okay, good. Let, let's just... <laughs> See this? So he was, he felt that he was uh, striking. I mean, the past participle part is, part is of strike. Striking by the fate. Struck. Because, struck. struck, that he was struck by the fate, because he didn't want to be deaf. So fate is striking me now. I have to deal with this. So I can't do anything. So he wanted to die, practically. He, he, he felt in some occasions in his life, he had to deal with suicidal thoughts. He was deaf, and, and beside his deafness, all his sad childhood. I mean, when he was uh, uh, mistreated by his own uh, father. So, if, can you imagine? Da, 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 da. Okay, the fate is really knocking at your door, man. You will have to deal with it. Great. Now, everything in Beethoven's life was not sad. Let's say that most of his life was sad, very sad. But because he never knew the joy. The, then the ninth, the ninth symphony, symphony number nine, is called Ode to the Joy, okay? Because he never knew it. So he wanted to compose something to something that he never knew. It means I have, I have always been sad, I have always been depressed, so I'm going to challenge myself, I'm going to compose something about the joy, which is the ninth symphony. This is not sad, this is really, it will uplift your, Good will to continue to live. I, I'm pretty sure you're fa familiar with this. Oh, to the joy. It's, it, it inspires that all men will be brothers one day. It appeals to the brotherhood. <laughs> so that, that really inspires you. It's, it will uplift your positive feelings. That was his last symphony. He, he never composed any other symphony beside, uh, beyond that one. So can you feel in there, what, what is the difference between this symphony and the previous one? There is a difference, can you tell? He never experienced joy. That's why he made the ninth symphony, which is called Ode to the Joy. It means, okay, happiness, I don't know you, so I'm going to compose a symphony to you. I'm going to challenge you. And this was the last symphony that he composed. He composed nine, that this is the number nine, the last. And he was completely deaf when he composed it. Can you imagine that? 
he couldn't he, he couldn't listen to that. So it's a message of joy, and it will, it appeals to the brotherhood of all human beings. Okay. In conclusion, my friends, I have to say that his early life, career, and musical compositions they are crucial to understand the among all many other topics. It's crucial to understand the life of, of, of this genius. Mm -hmm. Mozart, when he met, Mozart met him when he was a boy and said, this boy will give something to the world to listen. He was foreshadowing uh, Beethoven's life. So his early life career and compositions of this genius left a legacy to all musicians that still remember him. I mean, his nine symphonies are the pillar of the Romantic period, and his music will always live on. Thank you for listening. Thank you, my friends. Thank you very much.